What's going on, everybody? It is the December 15th, Friday, which is the best part of all of this, the fact that it's Friday. Uh, it's the Friday DFS slate, huge slate. We've got 11 games, ton of early games. Um, it's going to be a really wild night, I think. Um, I'm just praying that we don't get the uh, the ridiculous news that we've been getting lately. Um, you know, just one or two pieces. We don't need we don't need crazy stuff. Um, so this is going to be a long one. So I'm going to stop uh, wasting time. Hornets and Heat, first game on the docket. Hornets have a 104.75 implied total, which is 13th out of the 22 teams tonight. Um, I think we could take a look at Kemba. Well, we're going to take a look at everything. We all know that. God. <laughs> Last night was uh, slightly unsuccessful, so if you're interested, go check out that recap video. This refreshed it is. Alrighty, so I'm interested in Batum. I'll take a look at Kemba. Maybe MKG. So Kemba is at 7,700. He needs 38 for value. It's been lagging a little bit. I don't see the need to force that. Um, Batum needs 30. <sighs> mm, I could see it. It's just not the best game, so again, I don't I don't see the need to force it. Um, no justice Winslow for the Heat. I don't really think that matters too much. I don't really see anything here that, that stands out. I mean, you would think Dwight would be in for a decent game, but I think I thought that... Did they play recently? Yeah, I think I had Dwight here, and he was stinky. Oh, is that the is that the awful one? It is. That's the nine turnover game. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't really like anything from Charlotte tonight, but I, I thought about it before and I liked it. I can see Dwight, especially on DK. Um, I think that game against the Heat was an aberration. So might be interesting to look at him, but no value popping off the page so far. Next, we'll head to Miami. 99.75 implied total. 20th out of the 22 teams. Um, this looks like Tyler Johnson, Josh Richardson, and Bam. Other than that, it seems like everybody is priced correctly. Tyler Johnson looks pretty good on DK. But let's take a peek. Uh, we will be doing a live stream tonight, uh, starting at 6. Last night's was pretty fun. Um, if you want to go back and watch me not get my rosters into DK um, and start a lineup that had five zeros in it, that'll be a fun uh, research experiment for everyone. So head back to the, the Live Before Lock video. Watch like the last 15 minutes of it. It was an absolute disaster and hilarious. Uh, but we will be doing a live stream. We cracked 400 people last night for the first time, so thank you to everybody that joined us. <sighs> okay. We could take a look at Josh Richardson. Maybe Dragic and Waiters. Goran needs 32. I don't see it. I don't see a lot in this game. Tyler Johnson needs 23. 
I really so like I like Tyler Johnson. If he if if we know that he's gonna play, I think he looks okay. Josh Richardson needs twenty three. Probably not the best spot. Bam needs twenty. If he's gonna get the minutes, you know, it's worth entertaining. I wouldn't expect to pay all the way down at center tonight, but Something to pay attention to. I don't see anything else of note here. So let's head to Indiana. Pacers hosting the Pistons. Um, Pacers with the 106.5 implied total. Uh, tied for 8th tonight. Um, this looks pretty good for Bojan and Oladipo now back down under 10,000 where he belongs. Wink, wink. Um, so let's take a look here at the Pacers. Yes, the Pacers are going to look tasty tonight. We want to look at Thad and Boyan. We want to look at everybody across the board. So Collison, down to 5,800. Um, so he needs 29, just hasn't been there in the last couple, but certainly has the ability to go big. Um, not a lot of defense on the Pistons. I can see Collison being an interesting mid-tier point guard. If you're confident he gets the minutes, like he can, he can get there for sure. Um, Oladipo, again, I can't, it's just too expensive. He's, he needs 48, 49, yeah, 48 to hit value. I mean, he's been there in three of his, full four of his last seven. 48 is just so many. And he'll probably be getting a steady dose of Avery Bradley, uh, so that just doesn't seem like the spot. Now, Bojan, on the other hand, who needs 23, you know, he's boom or bust, but when it comes to the small forward, sometimes you need that. Now, Thad, I thought, looked really good. So that would be 34. Obviously had the big one in his last game. You know, got a day's rest. Pistons coming in on a back-to-back. -back. Um, I'm comfortable with Thad. And Miles Turner looks great on DK, 6,400. But on FanDuel, he needs 39. He's been above 35 in three of his last four. Um, but that's a big stretch. But he looks good. I, I would have no problem using him on DK. I wouldn't, I wouldn't use him on uh, FanDuel. Okay, um, to the Pistons. On the back-to-back, -back, 102 implied total, which is 16th on the night. Uh, Drummond had a nice bounce-back game last night. Um, Ish Smith got into foul trouble, so that was why he saw the, the reduced minutes. He, um, he picked up two quick fouls early last night. I thought that he was a decent look for last night. I don't think Reggie Jackson really did anything to... Uh, put a stranglehold on that job. So it's possible that Smith gets some additional run tonight. Um, we want to look at Tobias Harris. And I think Drummond. So Tobias Harris needs 33. Hasn't really been there, so I'll pass. Drummond needs 48, no, 47. Obviously the upside is there, um, but on a slate like this, with the totals like they are, um, I'm really trying to narrow my focus this morning, and I don't really see it with Drummond. There's not really a ton of value out there. 
outside of I do think that Ish Smith still looks okay, uh, especially in GPPs. I mean, it's not really like a cash play or anything. Not on an 11-game slate, at least. But there's nothing there from the Pistons. So move to the Magic. Uh, this one's going to need some monitoring. Right now, the assumption is that Aaron Gordon plays and that Jonathan Isaac plays and that Aaron Aflalo plays. So take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt because there's a lot up in the air. Uh, I have a made-up line of the Magic as one-point favorites at home against the Blazers. 107 implied total. Um, you know, I don't really want any of Aaron Gordon. Like, I don't really want anything here except for, like, even Vooch is tough to say. Well, he looks okay on DK. Um, and Peyton looks really good at DK, 6,000. If he plays at all, like, you know, it's old Alfred Peyton, 6,000's a bargain. But nothing jumps off the page in FanDuel. To use anybody on Orlando, we really need... Uh, injury news so for me there's nobody on the magic that i'm interested in for tonight until we hear further news and for portland um the assumption is that nurkic will play so we need to look at lillard and mccollum and i think evan turner at 3600 is in play off to a weird start um i expected a little bit more to pop off the page but fandle's pricing was pretty tight to start not fun. Nope, they are Portland. Orlando. Okay, so this seems like more of a CJ game. Well. Yeah, this seems like more of a CJ game than a Dame game. I don't want anything from a Minu, and I'll look at Evan Turner. Dame needs 47. Um, you know, he, he was in that area for four of his last five. Orlando doesn't really have anything, so I'll mark down Lillard, but I'd be surprised if I went to him. There'll be another point guard in that area. <clears throat> Then CJ needs 35. Uh, big 40 point game. And in the last one, did they go to OT? Or is that just big minutes? No, nope, that's just big minutes. I think that CJ has the ability to keep that momentum going. And then Evan Turner just needs 18. Um, yeah, I don't I don't really see it. I like it in GPPs though. I think Aminu's too expensive. He's too boom and busty. And I don't want Nurkic on the way back in. So that's it for this game. Uh, next game up, Sixers and Thunder. This is just a good one. Um, hoping to watch some of this if I can. Sixers, 106.75 implied total, which is 7th on the night. Um, Covington is back. But, you know, we know that we just need to be looking at everybody. Tricky game. You know, it's the Thunder defense is good. So it's one of those games where we really do want to pay attention. Entered the wrong team. Everybody take a drink. It's Friday. You're allowed to start drinking at 7.20 a.m., right? No? That's, that's weird? Okay. Just checking. Okay, so Redick, Covington, Sarich. I think it's an. Oh man, I might have to avoid Simmons and Embiid. So McConnell at 4,100. I'm going to pass until we know more. Redick at 58. So he needs 29. Hit it in the last one. He's been at that mark or slightly higher in the last three. 
how much has his salary gone up? Because I don't want to be late to this party. Yeah, this is his high. I'll entertain it, but it uh, feels more like I'd rather be somewhere else. Covington needs 35. He sat out in the last two. Um, before that, he was well over 35 in three of his last four. He'd probably be getting, like, mellow. Because Adams will be on Embiid. I would guess Paul George will be on Ben Simmons. And then Mello is going to be on Covington or Saric, I would imagine. Probably Saric if they're on the floor at the same time, which would give Covington. Roberson? No, they'll probably have Roberson. Oh, Roberson's out. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so I like Redick. And I like Saric. For sure, Dario Covington. It's it's a it's a wonder that I've ever won a single dollar playing this. When are we gonna get? Have I called him? Oh, we didn't get to the Thunder yet. Over under on the amount of times I call Russell Westbrook Russell Wilson. I don't even hear myself do it, and apparently I do it basically every time. Sarge needs thirty two. Um, he's been right there. You know, 28, 30, 32. But I think that he can be in for a big night just from a matchup standpoint. Ben Simmons needs 46. He's going to have some tough sledding tonight. I don't think... I don't think I could totally go there. That doesn't seem like the best stud to pay up for. And then Embiid needs 55. Um, you know, I, lo I know he likes to come to play in big games. But Adams is no joke. And that doesn't see it doesn't seem like the best spot. So let's go to OKC. Thunder 105.25 implied total. It is 11th on the night. Um, no Roberson. Or Roberson. I feel like Bill Simmons. I don't know what's. I don't know what the par proper way to say that is. I think it's Roberson. I don't really care what it is. <laughs> let's be perfectly honest. I'm just going to say whatever I want. Call him Andre. Make it easy. All right. So I don't see Russ being in a good spot. In the shock of all shocks, I like Paul George. Um, I also like Mello. And I don't really want any part of Steven Adams. Paul George is at 7,600, so he needs 38. He's had four straight games in the 20s. But he's the type of guy that can go for 60. They've had a night off. I'm, I'm still on Paul George. Mello needs 32. This one will be a little bit more interesting. Um, man, he's all over the place. No way I end up with both of them, but I'd fit both of them in if I could, like, either direction. I don't see it for Russ, though. He needs 55. I just don't want to risk it. He's always in play. I don't think it's a totally bad matchup, but again, I think there are going to be uh, better plays in the late games. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To the Wiz, Wizards, 109.75 implied total. It is fourth on the night. They are playing the dreadful Clippers. Clippers are going to be without Austin Rivers. How will they manage? I don't know. It's going to be difficult for them. It's a tough thing to overcome. Markeith Moore is supposed to be back, assuming that Jan Mahinmi will also be playing. Not that he's, like, in play or anything. Yeah, so we're looking at Beal. We're looking at Wall. 
but Beal in particular, although I still wish his salary would go down a little bit. Um, I'm in for Otto Porter as well. Maybe Ubre. So Wall needs 45. I don't think we can trust it from a minutes perspective right now. Beal needs 40. Um, I expect him to be right there. No reason to ignore Bradley Beal tonight. Porter needs 35. Um, I mean, it's scary when he's a guy that can go. You know, in three straight games, he went 16, 56, and 20.5. That's just, that's such a range, man. <sighs> Auto Porter has the ability to go off. I'm not entirely sure that this is the game that lets him do that. Although, if he gets hot from the mid-range, it is a spot that can just torpedo them. I think Wall probably looks really good. If we hear anything about Wall getting minutes, um, I could I could see wanting to fire him up. If Teodosic is going to have to play additional minutes, Wall should roast him. That's it for me there. <clears throat> um, Beal looks really good on DK. So does Wall, to be perfectly honest. Um, to the Clippers, who I just feel bad for. But, you know, they made their own bed. They knew what they were getting themselves, themselves into. <clears throat> I'm anxious to see where they trade DeAndre. So we've got Taya Dosic. Lou Williams. I don't know. Who cares? Uh, Clippers. 100.25 implied total, which is 19th on the night. Just not good. <coughs> This looks a lot like a blowout. Eighty five hundred for DeAndre. So that's forty two. He has been over forty in three of his last four. Uh, he's been playing really well lately. How much has his salary gone up? Yep, he took the big jump. He wanted to be on him up until uh, the last one, but I'm not. I don't want to pay the eighty-five hundred dollar freight. So let's go to. Let's see. I mean, Taya Dosich is probably okay. I just don't really trust him. I think the guy on. On DK, I think Sam Decker looks like a really good play. Um, I, he's probably in play as well on FanDuel. 4,300. So he needs 21. But he should be getting minutes with Austin Rivers out. Other than that, I'm not really seeing anything that I trust. Uh, Tay Dosich on DK. Uh, 4,500. Almost a no-brainer play. Uh, I would definitely, definitely, definitely be looking there. If Lou Williams didn't need 44, I'd probably be looking there, even though he's been over 40 in four of his last five. I'll at least entertain it. But I'm not going to want a lot of the Clippers. But on DK, uh, you almost assuredly want Taya Dosich. Now we'll get out of the 7 o'clock set and head to Boston. Um... Boston is a five and a half point favorite at home against the Jazz. 101.75 implied total, which is 17th. Um, this is not going to be a very appealing game for fantasy purposes, I would imagine. Not getting the best feel so far. I thought that there was going to be uh, more interesting plays out there, but everything looks pretty balanced so far. Okay, so Horford could be interesting. With his ability to space the floor, um, I'm anxious to see how they would guard him with Gobert. 
Other than that, I don't really want any part of the Celtics. Maybe Kyrie. Kyrie needs 42. Um, you know, he's been at 42 basically one, two, three, four, every other game. It's just not the it's not the play. Horford needs 39. It's a heavy number. But coming in, you know, he got a lot of rest, so he had 1, 2, 3, 12, 13, 14. Three days off. Should be feeling refreshed. Let's entertain Al Horford. DK looks really good, too. Then to the Jazz. Um... The expectation is that Joe Johnson will get some burn. Uh, I'm just uncomfortable with the backcourt for Utah right now. Alec Burks at 4,200 looks okay. But again, what we're looking at now is the team with a 96.25 implied total, which is dead last. So... There's probably a limit to the amount of guys you want to take from the Jazz. And that limit is one at most. And his name probably hasn't been spoken yet. Yeah, there's nothing here. I mean, I like favors, but, you know. I've been wrong before. Doesn't Favors play, like, really well against the Celtics? Or am I just making that up? Yeah, I'm pretty much just making that up. I mean, I assumed it. Okay. I don't... Donovan Mitchell, I guess, needs to be looked at. 37. Um... I think that uh, he could run into some issues, but I cannot just ignore him. Um, other than that, I mean, it's hard to be confident. Alec Burks needing 21 is, is interesting. But now that Hood is back, it's really just all about how many minutes they'll still give Burks. I don't... I will take that look, but again, you can't have that many guys from the Jazz. We'll go to the Raptors now. Um, Raptors are 11 point favorites at home. They are hosting the Brooklyn Nets and the Raptors. Sneaky best offensive play tonight at 114.25. Uh, that is the number one implied total on the board. Um, Almost assuredly want one of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan. And depending on how much Serge Ibaka's salary has moved, um, he should look incredibly tasty as well. As it turns out, this is going to be DeMar DeRozan's night. I will enter this immediately. Um, this might be a Jonas Valanciunas night, although it looks like his salary moved a bit. Lowry needs 42. Um, I don't have a problem with Kyle Lowry tonight, but I don't... On an 11-game slate, I would never take Lowry and DeRozan. So, for me, I need to just... I would just focus on DeRozan immediately. I had DeRozan two nights ago for the 50-pointer. He needs 45 for value, which is a lot, but um, you know, I like it. Jonas needs 28. He's been well over that in the last two. Um, Brooklyn not exactly bringing a lot of heat in the, the big men section of town. Has his salary done anything weird? Because I don't want to get him on this $1,000 jump if it happened. Yeah, see? That's what's tricky. Uh, that's a fade for me. That's a stay away. For 4900 on DK, that I would understand. And, yeah, I just... 
for me, that's it's Jonas. And then Abaka. What did it go up? Yeah, he's up. He's up 700 as well. 6,500. So he needs 32. Um, he has been at 30. You know, he's been 28 or higher in his last six. But 30. Wait. 32, yeah, 32. Um, no reason to think that that couldn't happen. You want to have parts of Toronto for sure. Then we'll go to Brooklyn. I don't really want to have parts of them at all. Looks like Dinwiddie's salary went down a couple hundred dollars. I think he was 7,700 yesterday. Um, 103.25 implied total, which is 14th. This is just a giant slate. I feel like I started doing this video a year ago. It's only been 31 minutes or something like that. So I will look at Karis LeVert. I liked him yesterday, didn't take him and he played well. So willing to take a look at him again. I just know that his salary should be fine. 5,900 seems like just about what he was yesterday and they rarely change salaries in back-to-back -back set settings he's actually down 200 so i love it well i don't love it but i love it as much as someone can love karis lavert on a given day that's all for me on this squad i don't trust alan crab right now ronde hollis jefferson at 7100 has he done anything because he had a big game last night it's actually down 100 um Rondé Hollis Jefferson on DK at 5,800 is a, a sweet play. Same for Levert. Dinwiddie needs 36. He has been over 40 in his last two. Um, yeah, I think I need to look at that. Still can't figure out what they're doing at center. Okafor with another DMP CD, so who knows. Um, Let's go to Memphis, where we will most assuredly not be wanting anybody. Memphis Grizzlies. Potentially favorites. Uh, this line is not out yet. I've got them as four-point favorites at home against the Hawks. Um, with the assumption that Tyreek Evans would be playing. I really, I really don't like these teams. Although, with the way Andrew Harrison's been playing, can't just disregard him. Even though I've been saying that he's been uh, trash for however long I've been saying that he's trash. Okay. All right. It's bombs away. So, I have to look at Gasol. I mean, i got to look at everybody for the amount of threes that they're going to be able to take. Somebody's going to pop, you would think, or they're going to get blown out. Andrew Harrison needs 22. He's been there basically since he's been getting his additional minutes, but that's not where I want to pay up. And by pay up, I mean that's, it's not a good spot for him. Evans needs 38. Uh, I don't want that after him coming back from an injury. Parsons needs 22. He has been seeing increased minutes. Um, I don't think there's a ton of upside there. You want to be looking at like Jamichael Green on DK. Gasol needs 41. He has not been over 40 in like a week and a half. Um, I really wanted to like more out of this game. Or at least the Grizzlies right now, just because of the way the Hawks match up. But I don't think I see it. I would entertain Mark Gasol, even though I've been telling myself to avoid the Grizzlies. And we'll go to Atlanta. Hawks. I have 101 implied total, which would be 18th. I don't expect a lot here. Maybe Baysmore. I don't know. It's not the best game. Slate is turning out to be not what I expected. Um, when I first gave it like a cursory glance, 
things looked good and now I'm not seeing everything I saw or thought I'd see. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really like anything here from Atlanta. Man, this is brutal. Bazemore needs 28. Been over 40 in two of his last four. I don't think the Grizzlies are the coming out party, though. I don't, again, I know there's no, Vandal's pricing is so tight right now. Ugh. Let's go to Milwaukee. <coughs> Milwaukee Bucks. 106.5 implied total. Tied for eighth. They are hosting the Chicago Bulls, and they are eight-point favorites. Uh, the assumption is Della Vadova back and Tony Snell back. So some of the options have become a little bit limited, but... Really, the only people we're paying attention to here are Bledsoe, uh, Giannis, and to a lesser extent, probably not now, Brogdon. So, 12-5 for Giannis, but I will entertain that. I think that this could be an okay game for Chris Middleton as well, but I would prefer Bledsoe, I believe. Bledsoe needs 38. He has been over 30 in three of his last four with one 48-point game. Um, yeah, I'm, I'll pass on Bledsoe, but I think he's going to come up in uh, in some of my optimization. And then Chris Middleton needs 39. Three straight games in the mid-30s. <sighs> yeah, that doesn't feel like a ton of upside for me either. Man, this sucks. <laughs> no thanks on Henson or, or Thon. Nothing there. Go to Chicago. Bulls, 98.5 implied total, uh, 21st. Um, right now, I'm assuming that I'm going to look at David Nawaba. If Markinen is out, we do want to look at Miritich or Portis. If Markinen is in, I don't think that we can go to those guys. Um, it's just too hard. Uh, we don't know what the minutes are going to look like with all three. Shit. Not to mention the Bulls aren't very good. Although they have been playing better since Miritich came back. Take that for what it's worth. Okay. Um, Chris Dunn is probably the only guy that I'd want to look at, but he's super expensive now. Don't have any interest in Rolo. I'll take a look at David Nawaba. So Nawaba needs 23. I'm comfortable with that. I think Markinen looks good on DK. But there's nothing else I want on this on this team. We would have to get news on Markinen to know if we wanted to go with Miritich or Portis, but right now I don't see anything there. Second to last game on the slate, Denver Nuggets hosting the New Orleans Pelicans. Probably the biggest game on the slate from a fantasy perspective. Nuggets with a 111 implied total, which would be second on the night. I am assuming that Jokic plays. I am assuming that Will Barton plays. Um... So let's take a look at this. Obviously, if those guys are out, you know, you want to get to Gary Harris, who I assume is still relatively low salary, and he is. Got 
Got to have at least one bad copy job. Okay. Man, I didn't... That's not what I wanted to see. I didn't want to have to like Jokic. But I think the best play on the board might be Trey Lyles. Um, he's been getting big minutes, and I don't know if that's going to go away if Jokic is back. I think that they might. we might see more. How much? That'll be the answer to this question. How much has Trey Lyles been playing center, and how much has he been playing four? I assume he's playing the four if that's his loop. I didn't realize that he was shooting so many threes. Trey Lyles is bombing threes. And so far, he has played 98% of his minutes at power forward. So I expect him to keep getting minutes, and I, I might 100% lock in Trey Lyles. 4,300. He needs 20. He's been over that in his last three six of his last seven so yeah fire up Trey Lyles I think Jokic looks really good but uh, I don't know how you could trust it um and then even though the the shooting matchup isn't necessarily the best for some of these guys I do like Gary Harris at, he needs 32 um it's just at a good price I don't like Murray when everybody is back I don't like Chandler because he's Wilson Chandler. And I think Barton is probably still a little too expensive. But at 35 or fantasy points, Barton's salary has gone down. Where are you hiding, Will Barton? Yeah, he's down to 7,000 now, so uh, you want to keep an eye on it. There's some risk to it, but I'm fine with it. Then we head to the Pels. And this line didn't exist. This is a made-up line. Uh, Pels are, would be a 108 implied total, which would be fifth. So this should be the high, most highly owned game of the night. No, I can't stand up. Watch. I've got to finish this. Obviously, we're looking at AD. We're looking at Boogie. Uh, probably looking at Drew, although that's not really my spot when everybody's healthy. I'm going to fire up Eton Moore almost assuredly. Needs 24. He's been over that a lot lately. AD needs 55. I think I like Anthony Davis a lot. Boogie needs... 59, I don't see it. It's a pretty good matchup for him, but I'd prefer uh, Anthony Davis. And then Drew needs 37. I'm willing to entertain that as well. Final game on the slate. Houston Rockets hosting the San Antonio Spurs. Rockets 110 implied total, which is third. Um... Obviously, it always concerns me if you're playing the Spurs. You never know what Pop is going to be able to do. But sometimes it doesn't matter, like when you're James Harden or Chris Paul. And for sure, I'd like to take a look at Harden. Uh, I think this is a really good spot for Chris Paul as well. Um, no, Mba Mute is going to be out for a bit. <laughs> So uh, it could be a Ryan Anderson game. You should be getting additional minutes. Chris Paul needs 47. He's 
It's been playing incredible, so sign me up there. James Harden needs 55 and change. Um, he'll probably be getting a steady dose of Danny Green. How has Harden been against the Spurs in the past? Because this doesn't seem like the best matchup for him. No, he's never really had a big one. So I'm going to ignore Harden tonight. At least at first glance. Ryan Anderson needs 20. Spurs do limit threes. I would have thought Ryan Anderson took more corner threes. So, hmm, interesting. Ariza needs 25. Um, didn't he just have like a really crazy game? Why is that not there? Maybe it wasn't as crazy as I thought it was. I think that might be it for me here. Although PJ Tucker, 3,800, if he's going to get any additional minutes, um, it might be worth taking a peek there. I don't. They don't have gigantic rotation, so Tucker might just get extra run. I'm not going to bet on Ryan Anderson shooting against the Spurs, though. And finally, we'll hit the Spurs. I assume Kawhi is still limited in minutes, so that's not a place we could look. So the only things we really want to pay attention to are probably Gay, Aldridge, and Gasol. I'm less confident now, but I'm hoping that when I hit the optimizer, something pops out as a little bit more obvious. <sighs> okay, I'm willing to entertain Danny Green. Danny Green needs 21. I would expect him to play a lot. This is kind of a big Danny Green game, defensively. And then, you know, no Kawhi, obviously. Rudy Gay at 5,400 needs 27. That's, to me, a no-brainer. Again, another guy that I expect to play a lot in a game like this, just because of his switchability. Aldridge needs 40. Um, I guess Aldridge probably gets P.J. Tucker, right? Ryan Anderson can't guard him. Um, so if he needs 40, I think that's worth a shot. I don't really want any part of Pow in this game. They might play him right off the court. We might see a lot of Aldridge at the five. See stuff like Mills, Green, Kawhi, Rudy Gay, Aldridge is a lineup that might combat them pretty well so I'd like to have those pieces that are probably going to be on the court Danny Green, Rudy Gay and Aldridge so that's it that's the short list and let me tell you what <clears throat> I'm not very happy with it I expected much more here so here's what we're going to do we're going to grab the projections and we're going to take a peek we're going to see how it looks There's the paste. I'm hoping that something just pops right off the page. As soon as I click this, it's just like, oh, that's the lineup. But I have a sneaky suspicion that it's going to take some uh, interesting manipulations to get to where we want to be tonight. One or two pieces of news could open up everything, though. So, all righty, first 50. That's ah, the worst. A lot of Trey Lyles. A lot of Russ, which I don't, I'm not a fan of. A lot of Rubio. 
I'm gonna not be happy about what I'm looking at right now. Russ is far and away the best point guard option though. There's less of a gap at shooting guard. I almost have to go Giannis and Paul George, which kind of concerns me because I would have really liked to get Rudy Gay in there. Um, I think you can comfortably step down at power forward if you can't get AD. And then I didn't really like Cousins or Embiid, so that kind of works for me at center. So they should offset each other. Um, so let's look at Lyles and Paul George. And I want Giannis in there. And I want to see what that ends up at. Too much Ricky Rubio. We're going to need to massage these numbers a little bit. Man, it's going to be tricky. We're going to need some news. So that's it for me. Um, that's all I've got. We will be back at 6 o'clock tonight for Live Before Lock. Uh, like the video, subscribe, but follow me on Twitter. Check me out on Reddit. Check out my Patreon if you'd like. Um, shout out to everybody, all my recent patrons. Let me get that up here. You would think I'd be more prepared, but I'm rarely prepared. So shout out to Brian Durante, maybe? <laughs> Alex Barutha. Uh, you know, I've shouted out Brian Hamill, Jared Smith, Pablo Melendez, Ashiel. Who else we got? Chris Snuffer. Thank you guys. Thomas Poole. Thank you guys. That's my list of patrons. You guys are the best. Um, I will see you guys all tonight at lock. Or an hour before it. Bye-bye.